Okay, so when you're ready, you can open your eyes, come back into the Zoom screen. And uh, perhaps somebody would like to share what happened during the meditation. In fact, I thought I would invite Shakti because since last week, Shakti has joined the community. So she's our new resident and uh, we're all very happy she decided to join us. Quiet, quiet lady. Very good. Okay, Shakti, so uh, during the meditation, what, what was happening for you? Yeah, it's... There's a lot of energy in the heart area, just like constantly changing. During this meditation now, it felt like mm, it's hard to describe. It's maybe more like some expansion but also like a skin of a balloon getting more wide and then also like flowing over and just going somewhere <laughs> <laughs> all right anyway good yeah. okay it's like there's a lot of space lot of space yeah okay when i'm talking about it it's also changing good okay anyway everybody is i'm sure happy that you're now living in the community <laughs> and we're happy also and uh, happy we too. actually have there's one or two other people on the screen tonight who are interested to join us so that's also nice yeah. In fact, uh, funnily enough, Madhu is right over Siddhar on my screen. So Siddhar is is just joining the community as a as a month volunteer with the idea he might like to live in the community. And Madhu is a very busy lady with her sports degree, but we're just gonna expect that she might show up in February or March, but we don't know that yet even though I think she knows it already. But anyway, I have to be careful what I say. <laughs> okay, somebody else like to... Um, in fact, why don't you, uh, Madhu, why don't you tell us what happened in the meditation? Um, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I had a really hard day and felt really exhausted and a lot was going on. Um, but during the meditation, um, immediately something like in my heart was like pulling me down. It feels like that into silence. And... Um, but and then you said to focus on something, um, but I didn't focus on anything. I don't know. I didn't really focus on anything. But then I noticed um, things like coming up, like thoughts, and sometimes like I was like, well, like maybe in a thought, then noticed, then was back, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, I think you have a lot of courage, so we're, I'm sure everybody's interested in our, what happens for you. Yeah, interesting time of your life. Okay. So is there somebody who'd like to volunteer to, to share what happened in the meditation? Perhaps somebody I don't know, haven't, I haven't met before. Or... Okay, Prem Rishi.
Okay, very good. Hello, John. Hello. Hi. So no sex on the menu this week. Yeah. Uh, You'll be pleased to know that what's on the menu you last is... time. What's that? You told me the last time. That's the last time, the last meeting you will speak about sex. Right, right. But tonight, tonight I'm speaking about something that's even better than sex. Can you imagine? Better than sex. Yes, I'm happy about it. And I would right. like to share something about uh, my experience in the meditation. Go ahead. Some, uh, a lot of um, sensations in my head, in my stomach, in my heart. And uh, yeah, also when you said look deeper or go deeper, then. Um, it's space and it's wide and it's uh, like coming home. Yeah. Right. Right. Very good. Yeah. Good. Okay. Maybe one more person who I haven't met. Somebody I haven't met. Um, we have Volker tonight and Peter. I think you both I haven't met you. Not sure. Hello, John. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you. And my name is Volker. It's the first time here. Right. And my English is not very well, but okay. I try. Okay, thank um, you. Are you living in Germany or where do you live? Yes, yes, I'm living in Germany, 40 kilometers near Leverkusen. Okay, so if you like, if it's more comfortable, you can speak in German because Rada yes. will translate for you if you like yes, to do that. <laughs> that will be very fine, thank you. Okay, um, yeah, I live circa 40 kilometers from Leverkusen entfernt. Yeah, in I Mülheim. live. 40 kilometers from Leverkusen in Mülheim. Okay. And I saw, I saw for two days a video from you. And I saw two days ago a video from you. Okay. Uh, und ich war sehr interessiert, berührt und besuchte gestern das Open House in Leverkusen, habe dort uh ein paar Menschen kennengelernt. Es war sehr freundlich, sehr nett. Danke. And I was touched and interested in, and so I came yesterday to the Open Sky House to Leverkusen and met some guys there and it was very, very nice. Thank you. Okay, good. And now, in, jetzt in der Meditation, als du sagtest, geh wir sollen uns tiefer, ähm, tiefer gehen. Ich habe das Gefühl gehabt, in einem Aufzug zu stehen und in mir selbst zu sinken und gleichzeitig in die Weite zu gehen. And now in the meditation, when you said you should uh, go deeper inside, then I had the feeling I'm like in an elevator going down into myself and also in the whiteness. Okay, mm -hmm. nice, yeah. yeah. And that's all for the, that is jetzt alles für jeden Moment, danke. Okay, <laughs> but uh, you seem to be somebody who's very interested. I mean, have you been involved with Ramana Mahashi? Yes. Yeah, you see, you see, you see, you see, you see, you see, 20 Jahre alt war, habe ich ein Buch von und über Ramana Maharshi gelesen und er ist einer der Gurus, die mich am meisten zutiefst berühren und er begleitet mich mit seiner Lehre ähm, ja, mein Leben lang. Und ich bin so, jetzt when I, was, when I was 20 years old, I read a book about Ramana Maharshi and this was one of the gurus who touched me most. 
Right. So since right. then I'm living with the teachings of Ramana and I'm now, so he combined my whole life and I'm now at 62 years. Yeah. Right, right, right. Have you seen this book we've done recently? Well, we did it, uh, we published two years ago a book called Aham Sparana and it's a selection of Bhagwan's teachings in 1936. Kennst du das Buch Ahams Burana? Wir haben das äh, vor zwei Jahren ähm, rausgebracht und es beinhaltet eine Auswahl an äh, Lehren von Bhagavan. Nein, das Buch speziell kenne ich nicht. No, this book in particular I don't know. Okay. If, you, if you're interested, you can go to the Open Sky Press uh, website and you can get a copy. Yes. Wenn dich das interessiert, kannst du auf, auf die Skype-Seite geben und dir ein Exemplar holen. Auf jeden Fall, herzlichen Dank. Yes, thank you very much. I'm a bit surprised my friends in the house didn't show you this book when you were there a couple of days ago. So, ich bin ein bisschen überrascht, dass meine Freunde im Haus dir das Buch nicht gezeigt haben, als du im Haus warst. Because this is a rather special, rather a special book, and I'm sure you would love it. Well, this is a very special book, and I'm sure you would love it. Because there was a young Indian man who spent six months in the ashram in 1936. Well, there was a young Indian man who spent six months in the ashram in 1936. Hatte eine starke Verbindung mit Ramana. Er hat sich entschlossen, so ein Tagebuch zu führen. Er hat von morgens bis abends in der Halle gesessen und als er dann abends nach Hause gegangen ist, hat er all diese Notizen niedergeschrieben über diese Dialoge. And luckily he had been very well educated um, through reading many famous English novels. He didn't, he liked fiction, he didn't like uh, non-fiction. Und glücklicherweise war er doch sehr gebildet durch äh, so englische ähm, Romane, äh, also so, ähm, ja, war mehr an Romane interessiert. Anyway, I could strongly recommend that book. Also It's kann also das, available in German, you can have it in English or in German. Ich kann das sehr stark empfehlen, das gibt es auf Deutsch und auf Englisch. And at the mm -hmm. moment we're pre preparing it in Spanish, French, Russian. And maybe Dutch. Yeah. Momentan ich werde es, ähm, bringen wir das auf, auf ähm, Französisch, Russisch und vielleicht auch Holländisch noch raus. <lacht> ja, wundervoll. Und ähm, ich werde es auf jeden Fall lesen, bevorzugt in meiner Heimatsprache, ähm, auch wenn ich Englisch ganz gut verstehe. Ähm, ich möchte noch so I will read it for sure, but um, probably in my own language, also when I understand English quite well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ich möchte noch ganz kurz etwas zu dem gestrigen Besuch sagen. Ähm, es, ich war sehr nervös. Ich, hab, ich hab bin einfach hingekommen. Ich, hatte, ich wusste gar nicht, was ich sagen sollte, was ich fragen wollte. Es zog mich einfach dorthin. Und so wurde ich dann auch empfangen und es gab ein schönes Gespräch und ich wurde sehr überrascht davon, dass ich mit einer tief sitzenden Blockade konfrontiert wurde, die ich auch so, kurz äußerte. So, um, um, I, I, I like to add something from my visit yesterday in the house. So I, I came there, I, I didn't know, I was a bit nervous because it was like I was throwing there. I wasn't prepared. I didn't know what to ask or to say. And uh, uh, like this, I also was welcome. And then I was very surprised that I got confronted with a quite strong inner block. Und ich wurde sehr freundlich aufgenommen. 
Und es war ein sehr schönes Erlebnis. And I was very friendly welcome and it was a very beautiful experience. Good. Yeah. yeah. There is, I think, a rather special energy in the in that house. And uh, it's been now getting more and more quiet, more and more uh, energetic over the last 10 years, I would say. We've been ja, living there for, for 18 years now. Wir feststellen, dass eine sehr spezielle Energie im Haus ist und es wird auch immer ähm, stiller und auch energetischer, so die letzten zehn Jahre. Yeah. So the, the way you're describing your connection would suggest that it would be nice uh, when I'm back, I'm back on the 1st of November, so it, in that next week, it, maybe you would like to come to the meeting and we can have a direct uh, contact together. Yes, yeah, I, I would also. like to prefer... <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> yes, I prefer it. <laughs> I would like to visit you um, directly, yeah. yes. Ja, yeah, so, so wie ich dich erlebe, um, um, es wäre vielleicht schön, ich komme am 1. November zurück und wir kannst ins Haus kommen um, und wir können vielleicht einen direkten Kontakt haben. Yeah, yeah that's wonderful. Show. Okay. Okay, I think we'll put our translation translator away for a little while. Um, okay, so um, yeah, maybe um, maybe we move on from um, the meditation talks. So I would like to read today's text. So the question was, what are the indicators based on which I shall be enabled to find out for myself whether I'm doing Vishara correctly or not. So this is a very good question actually. Yeah? So this is the answer now is in 19, from 1936 um, when of course Ramana himself was in the height of his health. He was a middle-aged man clearly a very energetic and very uh, powerful and so he was uh, very happily engaging in long dialogues with people who had traveled of course from Europe most of them from Europe um, so his answer was if Vishara Vishara is self-inquiry Vishara is this question who am I if Vichara has resulted in a state of mind wherein it abides as identical <clears throat> with pure subjective consciousness, then you have done it correctly. However, it is not easy for the seeker, the new seeker, to tell whether his mind is presently abiding as identical with pure subjective consciousness because the topid mental state so he by this he means the kind of sleepy mental state where where the mind structures are hazily projected is often mistakenly regarded as being the clear slate mental state of pure subjective consciousness when the mind abides as identical with pure subjective consciousness, it unmistakably scintillates I, I. Thus, the def definitive answer to your question is that Vichara has been done correctly when doing it has resulted in the Ahamsvarana flashing forth. So this is very clear. And then he's asked, and how to recognize the Ahamsparana when it flashes forth. There's no possibility of mistaking it when the, act when the experience actually occurs. Whatever, whatever description is given is not only useless, but also counterproductive because it is a description of the experience of Ahamba, sorry, it, because if a description of the experience of Ahamsvarana is given, the mind twists and contorts the present banal experience 
of outward protruding satiation, craving mental impulses, the mind, in other words, the mind, into one that seems to perfectly match with the description given because it wants to avoid getting destroyed. So even if you've heard a description of the experience of a hamsparana being furnished in this hall, <clears throat> please make no effect to recollect it. When the hamsparana actually flashes forth, you will know it all right. Cognition of the Ahamsparana is not based on intellectual collaboration. It is a direct experience of the self, inferior only to the Sahajojiti of the Yani. So what he's calling Ahamsparana is generally experienced as something energetic happening to you. So it's not that you do something, but rather um, the, the, uh, the, the energy becomes very high and it results in a kind of vibration in the body. And uh, in our community, we've had, well, we've made a film about um, Indira, who's not with us tonight, and already i think about 10 years ago she had such an experience which we filmed as it was happening and later explained what was happening uh, to her and this was a, a, a definite example of somebody who had a hamsparana flashing forth it was very clear and in her case as far as i can tell it, it has remained permanent. And so I would say that she experienced a, um, a moment of self-realization. And as she's, you know, very busy in our community since 10 years now, and all of you know her very well and feel confident to, to get her advice, I'm sure you can agree with me about that. I'm not... I'm not actively saying somebody is self-realized, but um, Indira clearly uh, takes that. And then uh, there are other people, um, Radha, who is now becoming the Tantra teacher of Europe. Um, she's now done enough, enough um, Tantra meetings that uh, I can see that she's going to be very successful with, with this, um, this subject of Tantra. Because, of course, uh, as she's had this same Ahamsparana happen, uh, we filmed actually many, many such um, exciting moments when basically what happens is that it, an energy comes into your body, came into her body and the body starts shaking and vibrating, um, and maybe she starts also laughing a lot. Um, that was tend to, tended to be her characteristic. She would, would laugh a lot in the situation of, of Ahamsparana. <clears throat> and um, we've had um, some other people also. In fact, you could say in our community it's, fairly common that somebody has this moment of ahamsparana. All right, I often call it a glimpse of self-realization. So it's not really different from self-realization, but when something like this happens initially, you can't really tell if it's gonna be a permanent um, movement um, or it's a temporary glimpse. And the reason, the reason for the difference is basically whether the vastness had been eradicated. So, for example, in, in uh, the case of Indira, before she met me already, she had done a lot of work on her issues, on her mental issues. And um, so... 
uh, when this happened to her, there was a, a great openness, in fact. So we have a dramatic film about her. You can watch this film. And uh, you can get a sense of this Ahamsparana. I mean, it was clear in her case that from the very beginning, uh, whatever was happening was happening to her. She was not doing anything. For example, we offered her some water because drinking water when you're in that situation um, helps to ground you, helps to ground the energy. So she took actually a lot of water, but she didn't drink the water. So Indira was not drinking the water. We were pouring the water into her body. And you can see this very clearly that, that she's not drinking it, it's being poured in. So this, this is somehow typical of the Ahamsparana. It, it's also been described as feeling a little bit like uh, giving birth you know, which is not something men have experienced, but women experience this feeling when they give birth that that at some moment the 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 energy happens the energy works in such a way that the baby starts um, leaving the body and going out. And and this is not something the mother does. There's no feeling of she's doing it, there's much more the feeling this is happening to her. And uh, so, so this, is, this is more in keeping with this aha, uh, aha, uh, sur subrana, uh, sorry. Uh, aham sparana, yeah, apsam sparana. This is how it works. And so it's very beautiful. And it, as he says very clearly in this text, you don't need to remember it. In fact, he's suggesting that it's not a good idea to remember it too, too, too strongly because your mind can play tricks with you. So it's much better to just accept that when it would really happen, when there would be an authentic moment, then, of course, you're going to be completely aware about it. You can't uh, not know that. Yeah. Okay, so... So maybe we go through this a little bit slower, and then if you'd like to dialogue with me, we can dialogue together. So... If Vishara has resulted in a state of mind wherein it abides as identical with pure subjective consciousness, then you have done it correctly. So that's very clear, yeah, clear statement. However, it is not easy for the seeker to tell whether his mind is presently abiding as identical with pure subjective consciousness. Because because he's saying that the mind can play tricks. And uh, it's, it's easy to think that a kind of lazy mind, a kind of sleepy mind um, is somehow a deeply quiet mind. So there can be a, a, a mistake or a confusion. Anybody like to make a comment about that? Just to, oh, yeah, I'm not on the screen. Okay, Marianne. Yeah, I, I just I want to know if this Aham uh, Purana is. Uh, like that, uh, what we call an opening bliss to see that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's only words as words, you know. It's, I would guess, you could say that it's a bit better than bliss, because you know, bliss is still kind of personal. You know, I feel bliss, but yeah. Ahamsparana is is a, a amazing. Um, 
powerful energy that comes into the body and starts to vibrate you or shake you around. So I would say it's a little bit more powerful than being in bliss. Yeah. And this opening, when you see uh, that everything is one, yeah, it's also something different. Um, well, of, of course, it's not so easy to. Um, there's no kind of formula. There's nothing I can say that it's like this or like that. If you would come to our community and you would have such an experience then for sure I can tell you what's happening and um, support what's happening, yeah? But just as a, a kind of intellectual exercise, uh, I can't compare this one or that one, you know? So I would say, no, it's not, it's much more than that. Okay. At least it's not really important. And by the way, I am the one who signed up for India and uh, I've been in, uh, in the Open Sky House two weeks before for the meditation weekend. And it's really a nice place with the special place. Okay, okay, good, yeah. So, I mean, when you're really interested, I mean, I assume when you're coming to India, you're really interested in this subject. Um, like I was saying earlier to Volker, you might get a copy of that book if you haven't got a copy. This book called Ahamsparana. This is the direct teachings. Ah, you've got it. Okay. Yes. All right. Fine. Fine. So that's very good. Yeah. So, I mean... Uh, I would say that in our community, um, the many people have had something akin to Ahamsparana. And of course, it's hard to judge whether this is a, a big opening or a small opening, or is it going to last a long time, or did it last only a few seconds or a few minutes? So, so I mean, in a way, it's not really necessary to kind of define it. Um, because when something happens, it happens. And if it's really a big opening, mm -hmm. because you're, <clears throat> you're prepared for a big opening because you've dealt with a lot of your uh, mind structures, if you've done that kind of work of cleaning things up inside, then it could be that uh, you have a large opening and this opening stays. So this is, uh, of course, what we would really like. But my experience over the last 20 years, working closely with lots of people, it's not very, very common that people really become self-realized. Are you, have you had a strong experience, a strong glimpse? You want to tell us about yeah. it? I had, a, I had a lot of openings. Uh, I'm now 58 and was 25 around uh, at the first opening everything was love as well, I was going to the nature for losing my ego and uh, I did something uh, like a ritual I don't know really what I did but I stopped to breath, breath breathing right. and then uh, when I did the breath again everything everything was love so, the sky, the earth, and everything. It was really uh, innovating. Um, <laughs> Probably the best moment of your life. This was the first. Yes, it was the best moment of my life. It was the first time, and in the last uh, 30 years, it uh, was uh, maybe every three years there was an opening. Mostly I saw that. Mostly I saw that I am everything and I am the other one and it was opening and it was closing again. Right, right. And did you notice the reason why it closed? 
I guess I was going to think again. I'm not really sure. Right, right, yeah. Yeah. So when I talk about mind structures, you know what I'm talking about, do you? In in India, they call it vasnas. Do, do you know what is a vasna? No. No. Okay. So, so I mean, a vasna, for example, would be something like, I'm not good enough. This is a very common one. I would say more than 80% oh, okay. of humanity are having every day the thought, I'm not good enough. And this has a big effect on their life because then they're trying to prove that they are good enough, you know? So, so that would be a typical example of a mind structure which needs to be removed if you want to stay um, in a, a realized uh, state and not to lose it. Because unfortunately, when we have every day these kind of structures, like I'm not good enough, passing through the mind, we probably grab it when it comes and say, oh, yes, I'm not good enough. I better buy a new dress before I go to that meeting tomorrow, because I want to be uh, good enough in that meeting, for example. This kind of stuff is what goes on inside us with that particular structure. But of course, there are many common structures. And if you haven't done any work on cleaning up those structures, it's unlikely that the Ahamsparana will stay as self-realization. And in this uh, text that I'm now working on, Ramana is making this very clear that you have to deal with your vastness if you want, if you want to stay in this state. Maybe not, I think not many people want to stay in that state actually. Uh -huh. Das, was wir Glaubenssätze nennen und uh, also erst psychologische Arbeit, ja. So, so you to... mean that that which we call beliefs, um, vasanas. Is that what well, we call it's, it's not just it's not just beliefs. It's a whole it's a whole lot of stuff actually. It's it's anything which goes on inside you which doesn't allow you to be present. You know, something happens, then it's very likely something comes from the past in the mind and deals with that situation. Yeah. For example, if you have an issue with your father. And then you, you're, you're a woman and you, you go somewhere and you meet a man and you're going to reflect something about this man. It may be that you're going to be influenced from your, your own, um, how can I say, what's been left from your dealings with your own father. And you don't meet this new man in a kind of empty way in, in presence, but you meet him bringing all this old, old stuff with you. This is the kind of example. Yeah. Have you been working with a particular teacher over these years? Yeah, I started with Islam. I, then I, I went to the Sufism with uh, Pia Ilaya Inayat Khan. Right. The son from Hassad Inayat Khan. And right. from the Sufis, uh, I, also at least the last years I've been with uh, Christian Meyer, I learned the feeling, and now I'm with uh, Andreas Nassing, he's on YouTube. Right, okay. This is at the moment uh, the one with whom I'm going, yeah. Right, right. Okay, well, that's that's good because it's it's definitely a, a necessary to have a teacher who can reflect to you what he can see from your behavior, so he can then help you with maybe uh, indicating some vastness to to look at. You know? This is something we do in our community because as we live together, everybody becomes a kind of mirror for the other people. But um, yeah, this is not a very popular work. 
we would rather just say, I'm one with everything. So we can say this, but is it really true, you see? But anyway, if you have regularly certain openings, then it sounds like you, you have the uh, potential, actually, to experience this ahamsparana. Maybe you've already experienced it. Okay, nice to meet you. Okay, would somebody else like to dialogue about this text? There's Peter Question. and Alberto. They had their hands risen for quite a long time. Oh, okay. So Alberto. Go ahead, Alberto. So Kailash will translate for you. Uh, gracias. Thank you. Gracias. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Ramana, en uno de los libros de Ramana, conversaciones con Ramana. In one of the dice, Ramana's books. Uh, dice que Think no tenemos that. que conquistar ni, ni obtener ni We don't have to conquer ni liberarnos de nada. And we don't have to free of anything. Que yo ya soy el ser, yo ya soy el sí mismo. I am already the self. Y eh, en el libro de encuentros con personas extraordinarias, eh, la entrevista. And in the book uh, made with the meetings, interviews with the masters. Eh, que la entrevista que tú haces con Andrew Cohen. Uh, the interview with uh, Mr. Cohen. Habla de el esfuerzo y el no esfuerzo. Talks about making efforts and making no efforts. Y creo que el Papaji también le dijo a usted. And I think no that esfuerzo. Papaji, he also told you. Eh, en esa parte me, me confundo un poco en que la fuerza de voluntad la debo poner a funcionar o, me que, o se debe quedar uno pasivo. So I'm a little bit confused. Do I, do I have to be a passive person or do I need to actively, eh, with my will, look for uh, self-realization? Well, this is where it gets a bit complicated and a bit paradoxical, because as you just said, we are all, fundamentally, we are all the self. Es un poco complicado porque fundamentalmente ya somos el ser. And therefore, you, you could say I'm the self, and therefore I don't need to do anything. Entonces pudieras decir que eres el ser y entonces ya no tienes que hacer nada. And some teachers actually say that you don't need to do anything. Y algunos profesores dicen esto, eh, no tienes que hacer nada. But it's very clear that unless you can unconditionally surrender. Pero es muy claro que a menos que te rindas completamente. Then Ramana is making it clear that you need to do what he calls spiritual practice. Pues Ramana lo que está diciendo es muy claro que tienes que hacer una práctica espiritual. And the, the spiritual practice that he suggests is to investigate who am I. La práctica espiritual que él recomienda es investigar quién soy yo. And um, he, he is saying that, that what we do when we investigate who am I is we are seeing that the mind is, if you like, separating us from this self. Él dice que cuando hacemos esta pregunta, lo que estamos viendo realmente es la separación del ser. It's like the thoughts create a kind of screen so that although we're living as the self, 
we don't know maybe that we're living as the self. Es como que nuestros pensamientos bloquean el hecho de que ya estamos viviendo en el ser, pero no nos damos cuenta. Because the thoughts in our mind are pretty constant and there can be certain uh, patterns of thoughts, like the one I mentioned about I'm not good enough, which have a, a, a big effect in our life. Porque todos estos, estos pensamientos continúan en nuestra mente y nos bloquean, como por ejemplo el que dejé antes de que no soy lo suficientemente bueno. Este tipo de pensamientos, por ejemplo, pueden bloquear nuestra mente. And therefore, it's necessary to deal with those things. Y por eso es que hay que enfrentar estas cosas. Yeah. And in this new book I'm working on right now, Ramana makes it very clear that you have to work on your vastness. Y en este libro que estoy haciendo ahora de Ramana, lo dice muy claro que tienes que enfrentar tus vasanas, que son las estructuras de la mente. What, what's very interesting is that because this book is containing the um, spontaneous teachings of Ramana, lo que es interesante es que este libro contiene las enseñanzas espontáneas de Ramana, then he can give a different information to a different people. Entonces, él puede darle información diferente a diferentes tipos de personas. And the, these um, teachings, these opinions, are, are very subtle. Uh, because, for example, he, he can say to one man, you need to clear up your vastness. Y estas enseñanzas son muy sutiles porque él, por ejemplo, puede decirle a una persona en particular, tienes que limpiar tus vasanas. But the, the next man, who may be a very different character, he appears to Ramana much more open, uh, much more in his heart than the other man, he could give him the advice that if you can unconditionally surrender then you don't need to do any uh, practice, any spiritual practice. Pero si viene una persona que es mucho más abierta, es Ramana, se da cuenta de que esa persona no necesita sino hacer eh, rendirse incondicionalmente como práctica espiritual, no necesariamente borrar los vasanas. And he gives a lot, a lot of details about this. Y él explica en este libro muchos detalles de esto, exactamente. For example, he's saying that if you practice who am I, which he calls self-inquiry. Por ejemplo, él dice que si practicas la pregunta de quién soy yo, lo cual es una autoinvestigación. This is not an intellectual investigation. No es un uh, ejercicio intelectual. This is an investigation to come to see clearly that the I is not all these thoughts coming in the mind. Una investigación específica y necesaria para darnos cuenta de que el yo no son todos estos pensamientos que tenemos en la mente. He's also saying to somebody, well, if, if you can unconditionally surrender, but it has to be unconditional. Y le dice a otras personas, por ejemplo, que tú tienes que rendirte incondicionalmente, pero tiene que ser incondicional. It's not enough just to say, okay, you know, okay, God, I believe in God, you know, but it's got to be a complete, complete collapse of any ideas, any philosophies, any beliefs, anything which has been there before has got to be um, taken away. Esta rendición tiene que ser profunda y completa, no es solamente decir, ah, yo sí creo en Dios, etc. No, tiene que ser una rendición profunda y completa de todos los pensamientos y todas las estructuras de la mente. Yo quería eh, decir de Aham Purana, ¿Es posible vivir una pequeña experiencia del destelo así no esté 
en el plan del destino, o sea, el plan de mi vida. ¿Es posible vivir una experiencia de esa? So, going back to the book and the Aham Spuran experience, uh, can I leave this experience in my life even if it is not my destiny? I, can you leave it in your life? What do you mean by leave it in your life? Yeah. If he if he can experience this Ahams Purana in his lifetime, yes. even even if it is not his destiny. Well, if it's not his destiny, I guess he's not going to experience it. But if it is his destiny, and it potentially is everybody's destiny. Si no es tu destino, pues no lo experimentarás, pero básicamente puede estar en el destino de cualquier persona. And I mean, es, posible, es posible vivir esa experiencia y destelo como para uno despertar o para uno iniciar, comprometerse más con la experiencia. O sea, como cuando a un niño le dan una cucharadita de miel y queda endulzado. Ese estelo lo podría yo experimentar como para seguir en esa búsqueda permanente. Es mi pregunta. So can I experience this Ahams Purana like a taste of what really can be achieved? Is it like giving a small kid a spoon of honey? So the kid will taste the honey and then he will like to get more of it. I call I call this kind of uh, things a uh, hamsparana. I call it a glimpse. It's a glimpse. It's like you you have for some time, maybe a very empty mind. Maybe you have a strong feeling of oneness with everything, or love with everything, love love connection to everybody and everything. You feel very much one. You know, no, no separation. Uh, so those are the kind of uh, characteristics of Ahamsparana, plus this very strong vibrating in the in the body. Um, so the, those are kind of characteristics, but uh, everybody is going to be slightly different. Pues efectivamente, yo llamo a esa experiencia del destello Ahamsparana. Y es una experiencia que cualquier persona va a vivir de manera diferente. Eh, pueden ser con vibraciones, eh, pero una vez que lo has experimentado, pues te va a llevar a una experiencia muy diferente. Okay. Gracias, gracias, gracias. Thank you, thank you. Okay. So much. Are we going to see you in India? Are you coming to India? Eh, pregunta que si vas a venir a la expedición de la India. Eh, sí, estoy en este plan, ya estamos programando, revisando los vuelos y separando el periodo de vacaciones. Esa es como el 90% la intención participar. So yeah, that is my plan. I'm looking for flights and I'm uh, planning the trip. Uh, my intention is to be there and I'm uh, 90% sure that I'm going to be there. Okay, very good. Yeah. Okay, nice. Okay, so let's go back to the gallery. So is there somebody else who would like to talk about this text? Peter, would you like to talk with me? Do I do I know you from Italy? Are you Italian? <clears throat> what 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 is your Peter, nationality, Peter? Peter, maybe um, can you check your microphone settings because we can't hear you. Perhaps um, when you click on the microphone symbol on the left side. On the computer.
next to the microphone symbol there's a small arrow maybe you click on that and perhaps there's a different microphone you could use because right now we can't hear you Hört man mich jetzt? Ja, yeah, perfect. Yeah, we hear you now, yeah. yeah. Uh, hello, David. Hello, hello. So you uh, speak German, I think, yeah. Ich wollte noch kurz dazu sagen, dass ich ein sehr warmes Gefühl im Bauch hatte. Ich wollte noch gerade dazu sagen, also dass ich ein sehr warmes Gefühl hatte. Can you translate in English, please, rather? Yeah. <laughs> I had a very warm... What happened? Um, somehow our internet connection is a bit bad. So he's saying that he had a very warm feeling inside. Uh, okay, oh, maybe I'll awesome. mute translate then, please. Yeah. Sure, yeah. If you could translate what he just said, because I didn't get any translation of it. So he had a very warm feeling inside his belly when he, um, also he combust, mind us, yeah. Das Gefühl ist auch immer noch da. So this warm feeling is still there. Right. Uh, ich bin aber heute uh, in deinem Satzang, weil ich mich vorstellen soll und wollte. I'm here today in the satsang because I should introduce myself. Okay. Uh, ich würde gerne an dem Retreat im uh, Januar, Februar in Indien teilnehmen. I would like to come to the India retreat in January. Ah, okay. Ich habe mich auch schon angemeldet, aber die Heike hat gesagt, dass, ich mich, uh, dass du mich zuerst sehen willst. So I have already signed up on the website, but uh, somebody told me that you would like to see me first. Yeah, it's a little bit more than just seeing you, actually. Es geht um ein bisschen mehr als nur dich zu sehen, tatsächlich. Because I've been running this retreat now for, I think, 21 years. Weil ich mache diese Retreat jetzt seit 21 Jahren. And it, it's a very... Special retreat, I would say now. Und mittlerweile würde ich sagen, es ist ein sehr besonderes Retreat. And sometimes we have people that come to the retreat, but then don't really take part. Manchmal haben wir Leute, die zum Retreat kommen, aber nicht wirklich mitmachen, nicht wirklich teilhaben. And so, um, Indira will contact you and will ask to get more information about about you um, so that we can make a decision uh, whether you can be invited or not. Also die Indira, die wird dich kontaktieren, um noch ein paar Infos von dir zu bekommen und was über dich zu hören. Und dann können wir eine Entscheidung treffen, ob du eingeladen bist zu dem Retreat. No. Oder yeah. nicht. Because, because um, you know, when we have somebody who doesn't really want to be in that retreat, it's the wrong retreat and blah, blah, blah. We have to deal with a big uh, energetic kind of block in the in the retreat and I don't want that anymore. Weil wenn einer kommt, der nicht wirklich interessiert ist, dann haben wir während des Retreats einfach mit so einem großen energetischen Block zu tun. Und das wollen wir nicht mehr. I'm not saying anything about you because I don't know you, but I would like to get to know you in the next period. Ich sag damit nichts über dich, weil ich weiß gar nichts über dich. Ich sag das nur allgemein gerade und ja, dass ich dich in der nächsten Zeit gern kennenlernen würde. I mean, do you live anywhere near our house in the, in Leverkusen? Wohnst du irgendwo in der Nähe von Leverkusen, in der Nähe vom Open Sky House? Nein, uh, uh, in der Nähe von München, Rosenheim. And no, I live in close to Munich in Rosenheim. Ah, okay. Okay, yeah, it's a nice place. Yeah. Aber ich könnte schon nach Leverkusen fahren. Uh, But I could come to Leverkusen. Okay. 
Well, I'll leave I'll leave this discussion to you and Indira. But I mean, I would say for anybody wanting to come to the retreat, it's very much in your interest if you have some uh, kind of personal contact to John David. Uh, so that you mm. don't come there and then not really want to be there. That would be a, a waste, waste of your time and waste of my time. Also ich überlasse das, uh, die Entscheidung um, und diese Diskussion uh, der Indira und dir, ob du hochkommst. Aber es ist für dich einfach auch eine sehr wichtige Sache, dass, dir, dass du uns kennenlernst, dass du mich kennenlernst, dass dir klar ist, ob du dabei sein möchtest. Genau. Yeah. Anyway, it's a good start to meet you now. So, hello. <laughs> Sehr guter Be uh, Anfang, um dich jetzt kennenzulernen. Also, hallo. Yeah. yeah. And is Ramana Maharshi somebody who you have in your life? Ist Ramana Maharshi jemand, den du so in deinem Leben hast? Da ist ein Bild von ihm. There is a photo of him. Okay. Und äh, da ist auch ein Buch von ihm, äh, äh, Sei was du bist. There is a book of him, Be as you are. Right. right. Das habe ich schon, äh, das ist schon zehn Jahre oder 15 Jahre her, wo ich das gelesen habe. It's already 10 or 15 years ago since I read it. Okay. Ich habe schon äh, auch äh, Satsang-Erfahrung. Ich bin schon sechs Jahre im Satsang beim Shanti. I have satsang experience. I'm since six years in satsang with Shanti. Uh, who, who is Shanti? Shanti is, um, I think he has Indian roots, but lives in Germany. Um, kind of short black hair, sometimes comes to Tiro. It's a man or a woman, Shanti? Yeah, it's a man, yeah. A man, okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. Ich habe okay, auch Retreat-Erfahrung, war auch schon in einigen uh, Retreats. I also have experience with retreats. I participated in some retreats. Okay. Aber mein Traum ist, uh, mal uh, nach Indien uh, zu kommen und uh, Maharajala uh, zu sein. But my dream is to come to India and be at Arunachala. Right. Und äh, right. dann hab, äh, da habe ich eben das, das Angebot von euch äh, im, auf Facebook gesehen. So then I saw your offer on Facebook. Und das ganze Programm hat mir halt sehr gut gefallen. And the program really spoke to me. Right, good. Okay, anyway, I'll leave Indira to talk with you about, about that. And if you can come and visit us sometime, that would be nice. Um, we yeah. have some weekends. Maybe you'd be interested to do one of the weekends and then we can get to meet you a bit. Ja, also ich überlasse das der Indira, das äh, mit dir zu besprechen. Ähm, aber in der nächsten Zeit haben wir zum Beispiel auch einige Wochenend- um, workshops und vielleicht möchtest du an einem von denen teilnehmen, dann können wir dich dort kennenlernen. Super. Vielen Dank. Okay. Good. Very good. good. Thank you. Thank you. Where are we now? 9.30. Okay, we have time for some more. <clears throat> Is there anybody else on the, in the gallery tonight who'd like to talk about the text? you'd like to talk about it, just wave your hand. <clears throat> ah, I, I see Lisa Lottie. I'm not sure if we've met before. Would you like to say hello? Do I know you? No, we don't know each other. Yeah, no. Okay. I, no, I we don't know. Can we you don't know me? each other. Okay. No, I've been here last last week, and but I've been to um, to the ashram in Leverkusen once, just as a hotel guest. But I was able to join the ashram when you wasn't there, and one day with um, Rada on the Tantra seminar. Oh, okay. 
Oh, good. So you live somewhere around? Do you live in near? Dusseldorf, yes. Okay, good, good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we lived exactly between Cologne and Dusseldorf, so we're equally yeah. friendly to Dusseldorf people and to Cologne people. We don't discriminate. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was uh, just listening, so I just got the. I, I, I think I, I when I was uh, in, in your ashram in Leverkusen, I read about it, and um, I think I have like a idea of it. Um, it never happened to me in 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 that way. I I, I would uh, think about myself that when I'm getting up. I don't know why, but when I'm getting more higher and more connection, I'm, I'm sometimes getting more afraid and then I'm getting down to myself again more. Like Right, right. Yeah, well that, but I don't that know can, why. Well, that, that in some ways is a bit natural, you know, because <clears throat> what we're doing, what, is, what the spiritual work is, is not to get something which we can call the self or enlightenment it's not to get something this is completely mm -hmm. false idea the the reality is that we have to get away things take away things in order to expose what is already present which is our yeah. nature you know our na nature is the self and this reveals itself when uh stuff in our minds is taken away so the process mm -hmm. in our ashram, for example, is taking away. And what to take away? Well, what to take away can be um, pointed to by the teacher. If you're involved with the teacher, he can see maybe where mm -hmm. you need to investigate. Or in our community, in the daily life, you know, we're working in the kitchen, two or three people together, and there's some disagreement or some energy going on, then that maybe gives you an, uh, a, a taste that, okay, this is something I need to investigate. You know? mm -hmm. So it's not always easy to see what you need to investigate. But basically, any ideas or beliefs that you're following, they all have to go if you want to become self-realized but not everybody wants that you know? <laughs> i'm working on it <laughs> <laughs> and how are you doing that um i'm doing different kinds of meditations mostly every day since right. a few years i'm doing practicing from time to time more kundalini yoga and um i also have like a like a coaching, somebody I'm just speaking about ideas, yeah, exchanging about, uh, yeah, and having a space for us some, somehow for right. it. Yeah. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, you've made a contact with us. I mean, you're welcome to come and meet us another time. Mm -hmm. um, we're happy to have people like you to be involved with us. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, I, thank you. I mean, I would probably ask you, why is it taking you 20 years to find us? Because <laughs> I, I used, 24 years ago, I used to come to Dusseldorf regularly and have meetings in Dusseldorf, you know. Anyway. I haven't been there. I haven't been in Dusseldorf 20 years ago, so maybe that's oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, yeah, but, but I'm always looking to, to your programs and what's possible, but uh, I'm a single mom. And so I, it's always depending on where to put my son and uh, because I also want to have... How old is your son? Three years old. Three? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. wow. Oh, so you're quite busy, yeah. 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 Well, in, in a normal day, he, he can be welcome, but if you want coming to do a program, it's you can't really do the program if he's also there but we like yeah. uh, we like kids and he's always welcome of course and i can tell you that kids tend to like our place i, I i'm sure he would love it <laughs> with the energy <laughs> and all the animals there for sure right right mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah kids somehow feel that they're allowed you know they feel some sort of space there 
and that's very attractive for kids, I think. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I look forward to seeing you sometime. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So um, let's go back to the gallery. So I think I've met everybody at least. Um, maybe I'll. Ah, oh. is she okay? Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, my question is uh, about Aham Sawat um, Spurana. Spurana, Aham Spurana, Aham Spurana. Is it a sensation? Yeah, yeah, you can call it a sensation, yeah. yeah. It's a sensation that in a way takes you over, you know? It's not something you do, it's more like you get taken over. I mean, you, you, you're a meditator, so, I mean, you probably had this happen to you at various times during your regular meditation, I can imagine you've had some moment where you could feel something was either coming in you or was expanding much more than you normally were expanding. Maybe everything felt like one, no separation. You felt maybe something you could describe as love you know you felt very connected to things and people um yeah those kind of words yes. so i think you probably know this from being a regular meditator yeah it is now here yeah in this moment you feel very now. empty Right. Well, that's the, the, the that's the value of this meeting, I would say, because nearly everybody in this meeting um, is very much interested in this topic, and so we we share something together, uh, so that energetically, I think in this meeting there is a an energy which supports you coming to um, emptiness, because anyway, maybe it's fairly easy for you to come to emptiness. So in this energy field of the meeting, you, natural you come to emptiness. Yes. <laughs> this is much more interesting than talking about sex for one of 128th of a second, I think, yeah? We, we were kind of joking last week about the subject of sex, yeah? But I think this this evening's meeting is a bit more interesting than talking about sex, don't you think? That was um, actually a question I, um, I had. Why should it not be good to talk about sex? Well, I mean, I, in my case, I'm quite open to talk about sex, actually. It's, it's not something I, I don't avoid talking about sex, but generally speaking, spiritual people are, are not wanting me to talk about sex. But I can do. What I really like in Tantra, Tantra does not, um, Tantra includes everything. Everything is right. welcome. So oh, in the last, sure. last session, I had the feeling, okay, sex is not welcome. So. Uh, well, I'm surprised you felt that. I mean, sex is definitely welcome. Yeah. I mean, how can sex not be welcome? I mean, the reality is that sex is a, is a natural, strong, natural part of our energy. And yeah. if you try to, if you try to, how can I say, um, I don't know the right word, but if you try to put sex down or, or reject sex, then I mean you're going to make a mess of yourself. I think, and it's 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 not by chance that very artistic people, somebody like Picasso, for example, very creative man, 
I don't know exactly, but he must have had about five or six wives, and they were usually much younger than him. And I would say that's pretty natural for a creative man like Picasso. <clears throat> so somebody who has a lot of energy in their system is also going to have a lot of uh, interest to meet intimately and uh, play play with sex, I think. It's, it's part of being creative, I think. And equally, if you're not creative and if you sort of reject all kind of things in your life that you don't agree with, you know, you have all kind of moralities or you have all kind of... Uh, opinions or philosophies or whatever, then, of course, um, you may have a whole lot of stories about sex. The British came to India and really made a mess of India about sexuality. And same in Japan, you know. I can tell lots of stories about uh, India and Japan where the English influence to do with sex has been very... Uh, has a very negative effect, actually. But anyway, we're not talking about sex tonight. We're talking about <laughs> Ahamsvarana. How about any questions about that? Ahamsvarana. Yes. Is Ahamsvarana the reflection of who am I? Yes. Well, I mean, if you get the right answer, you will experience that. It will just happen to you. What what prevents it happening is a mind full of all kind of philosophies and ideas and concepts and what I know, what I believe, all this kind of thing endlessly in the mind prevents us to really know the self. When I do not label this... Uh sensation yeah then i have a pure yeah they can somehow consciousness is here the no. universe is here good good so you're getting a good value from your your meditation and so on so that's great yeah yeah and i mean this kind of conversation can also give you the energy to keep going with it, you know? I mean, the, the, the question tonight is, um, how, how can I know when I'm doing self-inquiry correctly, you see? Because um, it's very easy not to do it correctly. It's very easy to do it in a very intellectual way. So you're asking the question about the I, but only in a very intellectual way. You're not really, you're not really examining yourself in the way that's going to bring you much benefit. So this question is quite interesting. How do I know when I'm doing it in the correct way? And what Ramana is saying here is probably not for everybody. I mean, this is for a few people, actually. And it could be that that in 1936, in his ashram, the kind of people that were coming to visit him uh, were particularly interesting spiritual people because to come from Europe, for example, to India, <clears throat> I guess, I don't know, it takes a week on a, on a boat, maybe longer, and then you've got to take a train uh, from maybe Bombay to get to Chennai. And from Chennai, you have to take another train to get to um, <laughs> Arunachala. Yeah. So it's, it's weeks of traveling, you know? Yeah. I mean, now we can take a plane and it's all easy peasy. In two days, we can be in his ashram. But in 1936, it was a very particular moment because it was already the beginning of the Second World War. I mean, it hadn't really started in 1936, but the energy was changing in Europe. And so, of course, there was only a few years where people really could come and visit uh, Ramana Maharshi. Because if, you, if the war, during the, the 40s, I mean, not many people would be traveling to India, I think. 
so um, it's a kind of particular moment. And because of this book from Paul Brunton in, in Search of Secret India, where he came to India looking for a guru and was going to leave without finding a guru, but then he was told to go and meet Ramana Mahashi. So he canceled his ticket and went to see Ramana Mahashi after he'd already done his traveling through India. And when he met Ramana Mahashi, he found what he was looking for. He immediately found a deep connection to Ramana and he included him in his book as, as you know, the person to go and see in India. If you're going to India looking for a guru, go to Ramana Mahashi. So of course, that book came out in 1935 and in 1936, the kind of keenest spiritual guys were on a ship to India to meet him, yeah? So those kind of people <clears throat> were much more likely to um, have a hamsparana happen than, you know, a little old lady who lived down the road and came with some special food she'd made for Ramana or something, who, you know, different quality of, of person, you can say. So because of this 1930s, these dialogues are particularly interesting because the, the people who are asking the questions are generally people who made a big effort to come there. Yeah, I think it's important to make a big effort. And um, I have one more question to the to our text this to, tonight. The text tonight, I didn't um, understood. Um, had you have you said that Ramana said that um, we have to work on the vasanas or on the vasanas that I didn't uh, get. Got Sorry, on the the vasanas, vasanas, v a Vasana, V A S N A, Vasana. It means structure of the mind. Uh, vasanas. Huh? Vasana, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, then, then, then I know. Okay, okay. Yeah. But the uh, Vasanas, um, I know this term from Mochi Baba. He's right. talking about the vas Vasanas. Is it the yeah. term you also use in your? teaching well the, the word vasna is a, is a is a sanskrit word and it means structure of the mind okay uh, i discriminate um vasanas and the was, west vastness i don't know to say vastness uh, but vastness you mean like very big yeah vastness <laughs> as in very big Do you <clears throat> yeah work with this um term with this word well, I could say vastness, vastness, but I probably don't say that. No, I don't say that. That's not a word I particularly use, but I don't have any reason that I don't use it. But I'm, I am using this word vasna, meaning structure of the mind. Because there's, there's some teachers who say you don't need to do anything. And there are other teachers which include Ramana Mahashi who say you do need to do something. So personally, I respect Ramana Mahashi and therefore I give the same teaching as he's giving in this case. Yeah. But you don't need to do anything if you can condition, unconditionally surrender. That's the fastest, quickest, most wonderfulest uh, way if you can if you can completely surrender then you know most of the teachings you don't even need and what's very interesting is that the man the young man who wrote this diary with these teachings in it the more i read about him because in the in the material that i'm now editing there is quite a few articles about him. And 
apparently he he had no interest in spiritual stuff, and his parents brought him to our natural mountain because his parents had heard you know wonderful things, blah blah blah. So they brought him there, and he was completely not interested. But then, when they brought him into the ashram, and he came into the room where Ramana was sitting, he had an incredibly powerful meeting with Ramana. And after that, he didn't want to leave. And then his family discussed and said, you can stay for six months. <clears throat> so um, it's pretty clear to me, as I've got to know the man who wrote this diary, that he was in a state of unconditional surrender. And he he writes about it. He he writes, for example, how he wasn't doing any spiritual practice. Even though Ramana is talking about it, he's not doing it. Because for him, he's just loving Ramana. He's completely loving Ramana. So you can say every day he's he's surrendering to Ramana. And uh, he sees Ramana as love. And so basically, as I can feel, he, he made this amazing unconditional surrender when he first met Ramana. In the initial eye contact they had, was something very powerful happened. Mm. So this is all sort of destiny at work, you can say. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's see if anybody else would like. Maybe one we can do one more person. Madhu is <clears throat> waving. Madhu, okay. Everybody knows that Madhu is my favorite student. Mm. Where are you? Okay. Yeah, so what I want to share or maybe ask is sometimes in the evening or morning, you know, I'm just in my room, just looking around and like nothing happens. And in those moments, like I sometimes notice that like, sure, like time doesn't really exist. I don't know. It's hard to explain. But um, on another level, it feels really boring. It feels like it fe somehow something feels really bored and like a bit depressed or something about all that because nothing like stimulating is happening. Right, right. Yeah, well, that, I mean, what you just described is a very honestly um, witnessed, you know, because you you can reasonably being a young lady you can reasonably say that you know just sitting in silence emptiness is a bit boring you know because we have kind of been brought up with the idea that you know if we want to have an exciting afternoon then you know we need to figure out something to do which we don't normally do like go to the zoo for a few hours or we go to an art gallery for a few hours you know we have to make some sort of special effort to make it interesting and if we're not doing something like interesting um, visit somewhere then maybe our afternoon is just going to be boring because just sitting in your room not particularly doing anything you can say is boring but this is only an idea, and it's not a true idea, I would suggest. And for you, because you're not an ordinary girl, even though you think you might be, or you'd like to be an ordinary girl, you know, because you've been interested in this inner spiritual work now for already, I don't know, six or eight years, or even more, what what's happening for you at the moment is that it's like existence is finally opening up to you and giving you the answers for questions you've had maybe for several years 
and it's giving you at the same time some kind of new destiny which maybe wasn't part of your destiny before so this is of course a very strong time for you and i find always when we talk that it's very lovely to experience how sincere you are you know you're very sincere and you should give yourself a lot of value to be so sincere and i i think your destiny is already you know opening up already because you you've got such a deep wish to know all kind of things that you don't know i think this is going to happen for you i mean it's already happening Mm. yeah still it's um strange because then you know i'm like sitting in my room and i'm like yeah so what to do like i don't really care oh very good very no. good <laughs> because most of your girlfriends i mean what are your girlfriends doing they're not staying in their room they're putting on some makeup and some snazzy new clothes and they're going out to some place where they hope to meet a nice boy probably yeah tonight is a party from my university <laughs> oh very good and you're not going or you're going now no i think they couldn't pay me to go like i wouldn't well they can't get me <laughs> i told them no no. <laughs> no there you are you see that so you, you're exactly the girl that likes to sit at home in this boring place so nothing happening because for you a lot is happening you know but it makes you a very unusual girl because you know probably tonight all your friends are at the party and you're not there hmm. and you can't really explain why you're not there you know you're you're just different you're got your life's going to be different you know it's so, it's so clear to me that you know it'll become clear to you at some point i think i mean it's you still have to me. let, you have this rather sweet idea that you're going to be an ordinary girl, you know? Yeah. You have I, this I, sort of idea that I'm, I'm an ordinary girl and I'm going to be a gym teacher or I don't know what, a uh, running teacher or something or a high jump teacher, I, I don't know. But probably I would guess you're not. But what you're going to do, I don't know, of course, how can I know it? But it doesn't feel that this is your destiny at the moment. I don't know. Yeah, we will see. Yeah, but no, I, a, I know. Yeah, you don't have to know. You don't have to know. I mean, you're also going to be in the party because you'll have more the, the project that your friends have got already now, looking for a boyfriend, um, or whatever, you know, this is, this is all still on your, on your agenda for your life, you know? You have all the same things, you know, that everybody else has. Like you're going to be a bit more happy if you fly to Brazil, for example, you know? But that may not be true, you know? Flying to Brazil may not bring you any more happiness. Yeah. But a lot you of know, people, people are flying there because they think it is going to make them more happy. Yeah. I feel bad because I'm talking so long. But um, yeah, it was weird because I, like, I think it's also like a structure of mine that I want to know what will happen. So I kind of like researched what i could like and everything but like yeah no doesn't feel so right on another level so oh, we will see so tell me what's happened to all these books that your mother's been buying you every year and christmas these spiritual books do you have them in your room like a shelf of books they are under my bed <laughs> under your bed okay yeah. so you can easily reach down and get a book yeah and have yeah. a look yeah. yeah so whenever you get very bored you could try that you know just pick up any book at random and open up any page 
and read a few lines and then you'll not be so bored anymore. Yeah. But you should try Harry Potter. It's also good. Is it? Yeah. Okay. But yes. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I'm sure Harry Potter is very good. Yeah. It's very successful. But probably I'm not going to be reading it in this life. No. Mm -hmm. Okay, so nice to meet you again. As you know, I'm a big fan of yours. Uh, where are we? Uh, okay. Not very good, is it? Oh, okay, so we go back to the gallery. <clears throat> okay, so I think we'll finish there. Very nice meeting. Thank you. So I'll see you um, on Tuesday next week, Tuesday.